The One Piece live action adaptation is out and I'd say its success surpassed everyone's expectations. It's safe to say that the overall public has been satisfied with the results so far and it captured the essence of the source material well while making the necessary story adaptations to make it appealing to a TV series live action western audience even though there is some room for improvement with some of the acting and some of the effects. One of the critics described it as an energetic cross between Pirates of the Caribbean and Scott Pilgrim with a dash of Doctor Who style camp, which is such a fitting way to explain the tone to a TV audience. I do think it also did a really good job at condensing the East Blue Saga or 95 manga chapters into eight episodes, which got me thinking how the rest of the source material could be divided and condensed into a realistic number of seasons and episodes prioritizing the story beats that would resonate the most for this new medium. We know already that the second season is confirmed, which was announced by Oda himself. We also know that there were talks mapping out seasons up to the sixth one, with the potential to reach 12 seasons, which is a crazy number. That's why on this video we'll be breaking down the 1000 plus One Piece chapters into TV seasons and episodes and storyboard how the source material could be better adapted for TV. Obviously, this is my opinion on how they should adapt the source material and divide it into a realistic number of seasons that makes sense for the medium, and this is also a spoiler-filled video, so be warned. Let's get started. Season 1 As we know, the first season covers 95 manga chapters. At first glance, that would imply that we would need more than 10 seasons to cover the whole story, considering a rough average of 100 chapters per season, but I think it could actually be done with less seasons. This is the chapter and arc breakdown per episode in the first season. What they do well here is dedicate roughly two episodes for each of the five original Straw Hat crew members, except for our man Zoro, who gets solid highlights during one of Usopp's and one of Sanji's episodes. They also try to establish Arlong as more of an overarching villain, by connecting the Arlong pirates with some of the other episodes in Villains of the Week. So the final confrontation with him feels more like a season conclusion rather than just the defeat of a villain that showed up in the last two episodes. This is a good example of an adaptation that needed to be done to make the story more appropriate for a TV series structured in seasons. Another example of this is the role of Garp, Kobe, and Helmeppo being extended. This also gives all of these three characters a bit of an arc and creates a B-plot in every episode which is super necessary in a TV series structure. While for a manga or anime, it is perfectly common for us to just follow the main story for several chapters. So for the following seasons, we should also try to follow some of these principles. Let's see what we can get. First, we are establishing here a scenario where we should consider around 10 episodes per season. This number is reasonable considering the average length of a Netflix season, as well as the high cost to produce each One Piece episode, because of the different locations and special effects. For season two, we'd also want to establish an overarching plot for a lot of the characters, as well as end the season with a bang. That's why I think the season should end with Alabasta, so we can have a high stakes confrontation for the season's climax and should cover chapters 96 to 217, which is already a little bit over 100 chapters per season, 112 to be more precise. The first episode should cover Logetown, which only corresponds to five manga chapters, but I think this material could be adapted and stretched into a whole episode, because there's a lot of relevant moments going on here, such as the introduction of Smoker and Toshigi, which should be the season-long marine antagonists of the season, the Buggy and Alvida Alliance and the introduction of Dragon. Even some filler anime elements could be incorporated into the episode to provide some extra character moments for Nami, Usopp, and Sanji. The episode could end with the crew escaping from Smoker to the Grand Line. Logetown works really well as a season starter because it really hypes up some world-building events before we enter the Grand Line, which would be the main theme of the season. Scenes like Zoro getting the swords and the Deuce Ex Machina lightning that saves Luffy's life at the execution platform are must-haves. The execution platform scene would also mirror really well the first episode of the first season, which shows Roger in the same execution platform. Ending the season in Alabasta would also give Smoker a nice arc, 
since at the end of those events he realizes the impact of the straw hats in saving the Alabasta kingdom from Crocodile and also the corrupt character of the Marines when they try to rewrite the events of the confrontation to the public. Episode 2 should cover the Straw Hats entering the Grand Line and meeting Laboon, as well as the events of Whiskey Peak. Here, they should focus on the most relevant story beats, like the Laboon flashback and Luffy's promise to the whale, as well as Vivi and Mr. Nine's introduction, conducting the crew to Whiskey Peak, where we get Zoro fighting all the Baroque Works agents and Vivi's reveal as the Alabasta Princess. The Luffy vs. Zoro fight is a good example of a development that couldn't easily be left out of the live-action adaptation, since it feels a bit out of character, and it doesn't lead anywhere. Episode 3 could cover Little Garden. Once again, the arc could be condensed into its main story beats. I would also keep the Zoro vs. Sanji's hunting competition, which is a fun character dynamic establishing scene. But I think the giant's backstory could be condensed, as well as the confrontation with Mr. Three in the forest. Mr. Prince's storyline setup should definitely be maintained since it pays off really well at the end of the arc. Overall, no major changes here besides condensing the giant's backstory and the action scenes. Episodes 4 and 5 should be dedicated to Drum Island. I thought this arc could easily be split between two episodes because the first one would cover Luffy's journey to bringing a sick Nami and Sanji up the mountain in search of a doctor and the second one would cover their treatment by Doctrine and Chopper, Chopper's backstory, and Wapple's defeat. This division would also mirror Season 1's structure of dedicating two episodes for introducing each Straw Hat member, and I like the idea of following this formula. After that, Episode 6, 10, should cover Alabasta. This arc is 63 chapters long, so I think five episodes would be a good number, which would give us an average of 13 chapters per episode, which is close to Season 1's average anyways. However, I don't think the story should follow exactly the same structure. For starters, the fight scenes should probably be shorter. The very drawn-out fight scenes that last several episodes is a manga uh, anime stable, but don't work really well in a live-action setting. Those should be condensed, like they did successfully with Arlong Park, and Sanji and Zoro fighting together most of Arlong's minions, instead of dividing the crew into individual fights. The time saved on this could be dedicated to establishing Crocodile and maybe some of the other Baroque Works agents as threats and adding to their characterization, as well as giving the Straw Hat crew a few extra character moments and interactions. Another character that should get more screen time is Ace. Similar to the anime, he could be introduced and established in more detail. The live action should focus on characterizing him better with some of the material we have now from Luffy's flashback post-war and Ace's mentions in Wano in order to make people care more about his death during the war. Another important change is Igram should die and Pell's sacrifice should also remain as a sacrifice. The live action already proved that they're not afraid of killing characters like the manga, and I think it would definitely be more impactful if both these characters were actually killed, the same way they handled Mary in Syrup Village. Episode 6 could cover Mr. Bon Clay's encounter, as well as the encounter with Ace and Captain Smoker. This should be a big ace episode with a lot of focus and establishing an interesting dynamic between him and Luffy, and maybe he should stay with the Straw Hats longer. I think this is an opportunity to fix a manga problem, which is the fact that Ace's death could have landed harder if we knew the character better. We have so much of his characterization being shown through flashbacks of other characters after Marineford, so it would be a good idea to showcase some other aspects of his personality sooner. This episode could also cover the Baroque Works meeting about Operation Utopia, the old man digging a hole and end with Luffy vs. Vivi. So, a very juicy episode. Episode 7 could cover the Straw Hats arriving in Rain Base, the confrontation with Smoker and Tashigi, and their capture by Crocodile. As a B-plot, it could showcase Mr. Two replacing King Cobra and triggering the war with the Rebel Army while the Straw Hats are captured. The climax of the episode would be Sanji tricking Crocodile as Mr. Prince and the Straw Hats escaping from the cage with Smoker calling for marine reinforcements and setting things up for the war. Episode 8 should start with Luffy being defeated by Crocodile and being thrown into the quicksand and the arrival of the Straw Hats in Alubarna. It could also show Vivi being tricked by Mr. Two as Usopp and being saved by Karu. Halfway through the episode, they should start setting up the conflict between the Straw Hats and the Baroque Works agents, 
and probably ended at a point of each of the fights that each straw hat is not doing that well. I think focusing the meat of all of these fights into one episode can make the pacing feel really good and the episode very dynamic. Episode 9 should be heavily focused on Luffy meeting Crocodile again for round 2 as Water Luffy. We could have the events of the Revolutionary War being instigated by Mr. 2 in the background as a B-plot, as well as Robin defeating Tashigi and the Marines. The climax of the episode should be Luffy, Robin, and Crocodile going down to the mausoleum with Luffy about to be defeated. We could establish the bomb at the top of the clock tower and how difficult it would be to disarm it in time. Finally, episode 10 should focus on the conclusion of Luffy and Crocodile's fight, the straw hats working together to disarm the bomb and Pell's sacrifice as well as the climax with the rain, Robin reading the poneglyph and being saved by Luffy. It should also showcase the aftermath of the events with Vivi's speech and goodbye to the Straw Hats, Smoker being angry at the Marines for trying to chance the story of the events and Mr. Two legendary sacrifice. The end of the season should also tease Sky Pia, Luffy and Zoro's new bounty, and end with the cliffhanger of Robin showing up on the Mary to join the crew, maybe even including the ship falling from the sky. So this is what season two would look like. It would cover chapters 96 up until 217, or 112 in total, already a bigger rate than the 95 chapters covered on Season 1. Now on to Season 3. This season would also have 10 episodes, but this time we're getting a little more ambitious with the chapter coverage with 223 because we want to cover Skypiea, Water 7, and Eni's Lobby. Hear me out, ending the season after Skypiea wouldn't make any sense because there's not enough content to fill 10 episodes Ending it after Water 7 would be anticlimactic, because this arc works a lot like a setup for Eni's Lobby. Having the climax of the season being Eni's Lobby would be a perfect way to tie the Water 7 and Eni's Lobby in the same season, while also having the last few episodes as big bangs, like we had for Season 1 with Arlong Park and Season 2 with the Crocodile Confrontation in Alabasta. Thematically speaking, I like putting these three arcs together to make Season 3 feel like Robin's season. In Skypea, she is introduced and accepted by the crew in her first adventure. When they meet Aokiji, he gives a little bit more context to her character and foreshadows that she's going to eventually betray them. And finally, in the end of the season, she, the crew declares war against the government for her. However, in order to achieve that in one season, we should probably cut out the Long Ring Longland arc, as we're going to see further down the line. Whatever good character and world-building moments from it, should be redistributed to other moments in the season, except for Aokiji's encounter. But how can we handle this challenging chapter count? Let's get to it. Episode 1 should cover Jaya, as well as the journey to Skypea until the arrival at Angel Beach. The first few minutes should show the crew debating Robin's inclusion. The ship falling from the sky and Robin's knowledge about the ship should contribute to the crew seeing her utility and accepting her as one of them. Masira pirates don't need to be included. Everything at Jaya could happen the same way, like Bellamy and Blackbeard. Mont Blanc Cricket could be introduced in the city, so we don't need to go to a second location and don't need to find the South Bird either. The Going Mary is updated with the chicken features and the ship goes upstream. In episode two, we start the adventure in Skypea with a focus on the world building, like the dials, the wiper backstory with the natives, and Robin discovering the poneglyphs, and also the start of the Straw Hats fighting with Enel's priest. The episode should end with Enel being killed and restarting his own heart. The live action would also be an opportunity to give the priest a little bit more characterization and personality, since these characters were pretty flat in the original material. Episode 3 should show Enel and Luffy's fight, with events such as Sanji saving Usopp, and a shortened version of the Nolan flashback as B stories. Finally, Skypea would end in episode 4, showing Enel's defeat and the ship floating back to the blue sea with the octopus. Unfortunately, the Foxy Pirates arc should be skipped. Despite all of the conspiracy theory that this arc is secretly super relevant to the end game, the episode should end with the Aokiji encounter as a cliffhanger. Episode 5 should show the Straw Hats escaping from Aokiji and approaching Water 7. This arc would be divided in two episodes. It should focus on the exploration of Water 7, Robin's disappearance and the tension between Luffy and Usopp caused by the decision about the future of the Mary. 
The climax of the episode could be Luffy versus Usopp, with Usopp abandoning the crew. If well written and summarized, it could be an incredible highlight for Usopp's character and actor. Episode 6 showcases the conflict between the Straw Hats and Frankie's family, the implications of Iceberg being shot, the CP9 reveal, and Frankie's flashback, ending with CP9 taking Frankie away. This also follows the motif of two episodes dedicated to each Straw Hat member, established on the first season and followed with Drum Island on season 2. Episode 7 starts the Eni's lobby arc with Sanji raiding the sea train, Aqua Laguna and Nami and Chopper saving Luffy, as well as the introduction of Soga King saving Sanji and Frankie on the Puffing Tom. These events rang from chapters 358 to 377, with the arrival of the characters on Eni's lobby. Episode 8 would cover the introduction of the whole CP9 team, Luffy vs. Bluno and Gear 2, with the meat of the episode being Nico Robin's backstory, her screaming that she wants to live and Sogya King burning the world government's flag and declaring war against them to save their friend. The episode ends with the train bursting into Eni's lobby and the Straw Hats preparing to fight CP9. Episode 9 would heavily focus on the action of the arc, with all the individual fights between the Straw Hats and CP9, Spandam activating the Buster Call, which results in the Frankie family, and Galila trying to escape the island, and Luffy starts his fight against Rob Lucci. Episode 10 showcases the conclusion of Luffy's and Lucci's fight, the Straw Hats escape on the Going Merry and the aftermath of the saga, with the Going Merry's funeral, Kobe and Garp meeting Luffy, Shanks and Whitebeard's meeting the new bounties, Frankie joining the crew, the debut of the Thousand Sunny, and Usopp rejoining, concluding with the fight between Ace and Blackbeard at Bonero Island as a teaser for next season. Now on to season 4. This season should cover 156 chapters, from chapter 442, which is the start of Thriller Bark, until chapter 597, right before Return to Sabaody. I do believe that the Thriller Bark arc has a lot of fluff and could easily be condensed into two episodes, but I decided to stretch Sabaody Archipelago into two episodes as well because most of this season from Amazon Lily onward would heavily focus solely on Luffy, so stretching the arcs where all the straw hats are still together makes sense to me. Also, having the season's climax be the Marineford War would be absolutely epic with the final episode being the not three days, two years incident, would be the perfect cliffhanger for next season. Thematically speaking, we need to group these arcs together to make this whole season feel like a study on what happens to Luffy without his crew, or to a captain in general without the support of his allies. Gekko Moria in Thriller Bark feels like a perfect foil for that, a shadow of a man, having shadows as his power because he lost his crew, having to be content with zombified, hollow versions of a crew and what he became because of it. Later in the season, we see that Luffy finally fails on his main goal for all of these arcs, which is to save Ace because he was alone. Episode 1 would be the Thriller Bark introduction, with the Straw Hats' arrival in the Florian Triangle and the introduction of characters such as Brook, Dr. Hogback, Absalom, and Perona. They also hear about Moria, I also think in the live action, the Absalom perviness should be heavily toned down. These gags definitely wouldn't translate well at all to the live action and to Western audiences. We have the usual arc fights here, in this case. I think it would be better to preserve the individual fights as they were because a lot of the pairings are really good, like Usopp versus Perona and Zoro versus the Wano Samurai. I also think this episode should preserve the Scooby-Doo aura of the arc. Preserving some funny moments like the classic Luffy and the zombie goofy chase scenes and Usopp being unaffected by Perona. However, the whole reasoning for Sanji wanting to defeat Absalom should be tweaked to only him being offended by Absalom's attempt of being a perv to Nami, instead of jealousy for not having the invisibility fruit, highlighting his chivalry instead of his perviness. The live action could be used as an opportunity to adjust some of Oda's shortcomings while handling the Sanji characters and toning down the creepy perv aspect is one of them. Episode 2 would show the Straw Hats fighting Oars, Nightmare Luffy, Kuma's appearance, Luffy vs. Maria, and the Straw Hats vs. Kuma, with finally the epic live action adaptation of the Nothing Happened moment by Zoro. It should also include Brook and Laboon's backstory. So this second episode would definitely be a heavy hitter with a lot of really impactful moments. We finish here, 
then the typical two episodes arc introduction for a new Straw Hat member, this time Brooke, and the episode ends with Ace's Vivra card burning, starting the chain of events that would be concluded in Marineford. Episodes 3 and 4 would cover chapters 471 until 491, and would cover Sabaudi Archipelago. Here, some adjustments should be made, firstly because Hachi doesn't exist in the live action. So maybe Duval could replace Hachi's role accompanying them through the archipelago alongside Kami. I also think Papag is not very necessary. Episode 3 should serve to introduce the setting, with the crew exploring the area, as well as introducing the supernovas and Rayleigh, and should end with Luffy being triggered by the celestial dragon and punching him in the face. We don't have Hachi here, so something related to Kami could have motivated Luffy to attack the celestial dragon, and we end the episode on this cliffhanger. Episode 4 would cover the aftermath of the punch, with the supernovas fighting the marines around the archipelago, the introduction of Kizaru Sentomaru and the pacifistas, and the climax should obviously be the Straw Hat's defeat and Kuma transporting them to different locations, ending with Luffy disappearing. Episode 5 covers Amazon. Lily, this arc has nine chapters. We know from the live action that this is a pretty solid number to be covered in one episode, and it is also very well balanced with action gags and world building, so no need to make a lot of adjustments here. Just adapt it as it is in the manga and move on, maybe just eliminating some of the random side characters introduced. Impel Down has 26 chapters, but I think it could easily be condensed into mostly one episode, episode 6, with only the last few chapters being covered in episode 7 as a setup for Marineford. So the buggy and Mr. Three shenanigans, as well as some of the screen time of Luffy, running through each level of the prison could easily be condensed, and the episode could end with Blackbeard arriving at the prison. In the first ten minutes of episode seven, we could wrap up the final events of Impel Down, with the news about Ace being related to Roger, Luffy's escape, and Mr. Two's sacrifice. The remaining runtime should be dedicated to the beginning of the war, with Ace and Whitebeard backstory, Kizaru and Akainu fighting the division commanders, the arrival of Luffy and the other Impel Down prisoners, the warlords such as Doflamingo and Hancock joining the battle, and it should end with Akainu sinking the Moby Dick, we want Game of Thrones final season level of budget for these episodes with plenty of easter eggs, visual and practical effects and dynamic pacing. Episode 8 should be the climax of the war, with battles such as Crocodile vs. Doflamingo, Sengoku and Garp entering the fray, Luffy getting some more tension hormones and releasing a blast of Haki that knocks out many marines, Luffy finally retrieving Ace, the two of them battling together and the episode ending with Akainu murdering Ace with Luffy suffering a mental breakdown. Episode 9 should cover in the first few minutes the last few chapters of the war after Ace's death, Luffy's rescue by Jinbei, Lee and Law, and Shanks' arrival, as well as the post-war arc, covering Luffy and Ace's childhood. We also haven't seen the rest of the crew since Episode 4, so I think it would be good to show each of them in their individual locations maybe following and reacting to the war and trying to figure out a way to return to Sabaudi in three days as promised. Episode 10 should cover Luffy's decision to keep moving forward because of his friends, his invasion of Marineford to ring the ox bell, Sengoku and Garp resignation from the Marine, as well as showcasing some of the whereabouts of the supernovas, the Straw Hat crew understanding Luffy's message, without the actual message being revealed, and deciding to stay in their location for longer and maybe even a montage of Luffy and the rest of the crew developing their skills in their respective locations to increase the hype for next season. The final scene of the season should be the iconic panel of Luffy in Marineford with the not three days two years message, making it clear for the audience that they'll all be apart for two years before reuniting and probably setting up the biggest anticipation between seasons so far for the new fans. I would imagine Season 5 would be highly anticipated considering the way Season 4 ended. Once again the season should cover a good amount of chapters and end with a bang. That's why I think it should cover Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, and Dressrosa in a total of 204 manga chapters. The 204 chapter may seem challenging, but all three of these arcs are easily trimmable to be honest. It makes sense to group these arcs together in this season because it feels like it's the first chunk of story for the characters in the New World, and it should end 
with them facing their first big New World antagonist in Doflamingo. Also, Punk Hazard and Dressrosa need to be together, because one acts a setting up arc for the other, and a whole season of Fishman Island doesn't make sense, because the saga doesn't have content enough for that. Episode 1 should cover the Return to Sabaody arc, which is only six chapters. However, I think the writers could easily stretch this content into an hour-long episode by increasing the amount of one-on-one -on -one interactions and character moments to highlight how the characters and their dynamics potentially changed with the time skip. The episode should end with the Thousand Sunny descending to Fishman Island. The few minutes of episode 2 should cover chapters 604 to 607, which highlights the crew's underwater journey to Fishman Island. Once there, the episode should also dedicate some time to establish the new characters and locations. Include Hody Jones vs. Zorro and Vander Decken vs. Luffy, and end with their meeting with Jinbei at the Sea Forest. Episodes 3 and 4 could cover the remaining relevant events of the Ark, such as the Sun Pirate's flashback, the Prophecy, the Ancient Ark, the final battle with the Fishmen, and the confrontation with Big Mom. The story here could definitely be streamlined, with a few of the side characters being removed, as well as some of the antagonists. They also should completely remove Sanji's over-the-top perviness here and focus a little bit more on the character moments, such as giving Nami more focus on this arc than the manga did, because of her backstory with the Arlong pirates and overall removing some of the unnecessary elements added by other in exchange for better characters moments building the dynamics between the Straw Hat members, the villains could also feel a little bit more intimidating. Episodes 5 and 6 should cover Punk Hazard, which has roughly a similar number of chapters as Fishman Island, but could easily be reduced to two episodes. I just trimmed the arc down to story beats, such as Law, Momonosuke, and Kinemon's introduction, the Aokiji vs. Akainu fight, Law vs. Smoker, the introduction of Caesar Clown, etc. Some of the shenanigans with the body swap, the samurai being divided into different body parts, brown beard, and some of the less impactful fights could easily be reduced. A good way to end episode 6 is with Don Flamingo's arrival on the island, battle with Kuzan, and agreement with Law to exchange Caesar as a cliffhanger for Dressrosa. Now we have to adapt over 100 chapters into four cohesive and well-paced episodes. This, however, feels less challenging than the season 3 adaptation, since it's very easy to trim the fat in Dress Rosa. Episode 7 should cover chapters 700 to 724, which include the Straw Hat's arrival in Dress Rosa, Luffy's team meeting Fujitora, and the setup of the individual side quests of his team, which consists of Zoro looking for his stolen sword, Frankie meeting Thunder Soldier, and Luffy joining the Colosseum tournament to retrieve Ace's Mera Mera no Mi. I think Violet doesn't necessarily need to exist, so I just pair Sanji up with Frankie and reduce one of the plot points. All of these remaining plot points could be condensed, with not a lot of time being spent on each individual Colosseum fighter, for example, and some of them being only background characters, not even mentioned by name. This episode should also showcase Law's group arrival in Greenbit the introduction of the dwarves with Robin and Usopp. The climax of this episode should be Fujitora fighting Law and Doflamingo, and should end with Sanji arriving at the Sunny to protect Nami and the rest from Doflamingo. Episode 8 should start with Law versus Doflamingo, culminating in Law's defeat and Fujitora and Doflamingo bringing Law to the castle, as well as the arrival of Big Mom's ship attacking the Sunny to retrieve Caesar, this is the point that Sanji's group leave the Ark and the season. The episode continues to showcase the events of the Colosseum, as well as Yusoland and Robin with the dwarves. Some of the exposition that was originally from Viola could be done by Rebecca to save precious screen time, and some of Doflamingo's fighters could easily be removed. The climax of the episode is Usopp and Robin's invasion of the factory, and the episode ends with God Usopp, defeating Sugar and turning all the toys back into humans. Episode 9 should include Sabo eating the Mera Mera no Mi and the creation of the birdcage by Doflamingo in order to create a sense of urgency for the rest of the arc. This arc should also showcase a lot of the fights between the Straw Hats and Colosseum fighters against Doflamingo's family, as well as Doflamingo and Law's backstory, and should end with Luffy and Law confronting Doflamingo. Episode 10 should be heavily focused on the final conflict between Luffy, Law, and Doflamingo, as well as the defeat of the other Doflamingo family members and the race against the clock to stop the birdcage. 
The debut of Gear 4 should also be a big moment in the episode, culminating in Doflamingo's defeat and the aftermath of these events, such as Fujitora asking for forgiveness, Sakazuki's reaction to Doflamingo's defeat, as well as Sabo's backstory, the formation of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, and the new bounties. The season should end with Kaido's suicide attempt as a way to introduce the character and create hype for the following seasons. It also took me a while to figure out a good arc breakdown for season 6 because Whole Cake Island is pretty long but not long enough to fill an entire season. We broke down Dress Rosa in four episodes, so filling an entire season with Whole Cake Island which is shorter wouldn't make sense. We could also add the Levely arc to this season, but I feel like it has more synergies with Wano so they should be together and putting Whole Cake Island and Wano in the same 10 episode season, as well as Zoo and Levely felt like a lot. What I came up with then is to cover from chapter 802 until 1057, a total of 258 chapters, and include Zoo, Whole Cake Island, Levely, and Wano in the same season, but making an exception and increasing the episode count to 12 just this once. I think this is the best solution for episode distribution and because it fits the overall theme of the season, which is defeating the two emperors, which makes Wano a better conclusion. This season should feel longer and more epic because it represents the conclusion of a highly anticipated arc, which is Wano, with a lot of character and elements introductions finally paying off. So we start off with episode 1 covering all the 20 chapters of Zoo. I feel like a well-written compact episode could cover the setting introduction, the introduction of relevant characters for future arcs such as Carrot, Nekomamushi, and Inuarashi, Establish Sanji's capture by Big Mom pirates, introduce the road poneglyph and Jack's invasion, with Momonosuke hearing Zunesha. It would definitely be a packed and eventful episode, so if it's well summarized, it could definitely be a banger. Whole Cake Island is next, corresponding from episodes 2 to 5, and covering chapters from 823 to 902. I feel like we would be able to properly cover this arc in four episodes as well, like we did for Dress Rosa. Episode 2 should cover chapters 823 to 845, focusing on the Sanji retrieval team dynamics without him on the ship, as well as their meeting with Yonji and Reiju, and Luffy's group encounter with Pudding, later continuing their journey to the seducing woods. The fight with Cracker could be easily shortened. It should also introduce Big Mom on a rampage to establish her as a dangerous threat earlier on, and Jinbei feeding her cravings and asking to leave the family to join the Straw Hats. The Sanji-centric part of the episode should focus on his arrival on Jerma Kingdom, his encounter with Judge and decision to marry Pudding. A great, impactful ending for the episode should be Sanji meeting Luffy and their confrontation. Episode 3 should cover Brooke and Pedro's stealth mission and Big Mom confrontation, Chopper and Carrot in the Mirror World, Sanji finding out about Pudding's evil plan for the wedding, Jinbei and Nami regrouping with Chopper's group in the Mirror World, and attempting to rescue Brooke from Big Mom, and the climax should be Sanji and Luffy's re-encounter, with Sanji rejoining the Straw Hats. The episode could end with Sanji retrieval team meeting the Fire Tank Pirates to plot the Big Mom takedown. Episode 4 should mainly focus on the events of the wedding, covering chapters 860 to 879. This includes Sanji's assassination attempt, Big Mom's backstory, the explosion of the bomb, Big Mom's new rampage for the wedding cake and the retrieval team dispersing into different groups, with Chopper and Brooke reaching the sunny, and ending with Pedro's sacrifice and Luffy going to the mirror world with Katakuri. About Pedro's sacrifice, I think in the live action Prospero would actually die, since the sacrifice would actually serve a purpose, and the character didn't really amount to a lot in Wano. His role in Wano could easily be replaced by any other underdeveloped pirate in Big Mom's crew that didn't get a chance to shine. Episode 5 should cover chapters 880 to 903, including Luffy's confrontation with Katakuri, Sanji and Pudding baking the cake for Big Mom, Carrot showcasing her sulong form, Jinbi protecting the sunny, Big Mom eating Sanji's wedding cake, and the straw hats escaping, leaving the sun pirates and Jerma behind to fight Big Mom. The episode and arc should ending with Luffy reaching Emperor status. I also feel like some of Big Mom's pirates should definitely have some short fight scenes here, the ones that weren't eliminated from the story. Sanji vs. Oven could easily be concluded as well with Sanji defeating Oven, since he didn't actually get a proper one-on-one -on -one at the end of the arc, and Oven didn't amount to anything after the wedding. 
Episode 6 is pretty straightforward and should cover the levelly events from chapter 903 to 910, their arrival at Wano and Luffy's separation from the others, ending with his meeting with Zoro, who he hasn't seen since episode 1. Wano could be covered by episode 7 until 12, corresponding to chapters 911 until 1059. I feel like the live action could be a great opportunity to condense this arc by removing a bunch of useless characters and forgotten plot threads and focusing more on some resolutions and plot points that have been built up for a while, Zoro should definitely gain more characters' moments here than he originally did, and Yamato could be introduced earlier and gain a proper character arc. King should also be introduced earlier like Queen, so the anticipation for his battle could be built from an earlier stage. I'm not going to go into much further detail about possible changes and little improvements because I think this topic would definitely need a video just for that, but you guys get the picture. Less pointless characters and plot points that didn't get a proper resolution and more character moments for the characters that matter. The Straw Hats. Kaido should also get a proper backstory throughout the arc. Episode 7 should cover Act 1, with Luffy reuniting with Zoro, Tama's introduction, and their fight with Hawkins. Maybe they meet Yamato at Bakura Town and befriend him. He could join this group and law and learn about Kinemon and Momonosuke's backstory. His reveal as Kaido's son could be done at the end of the episode as a cliffhanger after a drunk Kaido is attacked by Luffy and defeats him, bringing Luffy to prison. This episode should also cover Gekko Moria invading Blackbeard's home island. Episode 8 corresponds to Act 2 and covers chapters 926 to 943, including Luffy and Kid at the prison, Big Mom pirates entering Wano, and the rest of the Straw Hats adventures around Wano such as Sanji using his raid suit to fight page one, Robin snooping in Orochi Castle, Zoro and Hiyori and Frankie looking for the blueprints to Kaido's mansion. The episode could end with Yasui's execution and the population bursting into laughter because of the defective smile fruits. Episode nine would be the conclusion of act two, covering chapters 944 to 959. It would start with Sanji and Zoro's reunion to protect Toko, Big Mom defeating Queen, the rebellion of the prisoners against the Beast Pirates, resulting in them taking over Udon. This time, Big Mom shouldn't have amnesia. If the writers need her away from the action for a while, they could have just captured her with the Sea Prison Stones, maybe Queen with the aid of King. This episode could continue with the characters in Wano learning about the end of the Seven Warlord Systems, the alliance between the two emperors and Orochi destroying the bridges connecting the country's regions in order to prevent the Kozuki Alliance members from convening on Port Tokaj. Finally, the episode could end with Luffy's group preparing for the raid. Episode 10 would start Act 3 with Odin's flashback with Whitebeard and the Roger Pirates, maybe told by Yamato to give him something else to do. Some other character could act as traitor and kidnap Momonosuke, since I don't think Kanjuro needs to exist. The episode could end with the Straw Hats plus Kid and Law Invasion and Kaido beheading Orochi. Episode 11 can cover the meat of the raid from chapters 986 to 1015 and should include most of the battles of the third act and character moments such as Sanji, Robin and Brooke versus Black Maria, Sanji versus Queen and Zoro versus King and some of the other battles originally fought by the Scabbards could be done by other Straw Hat members that originally didn't get a good chance to shine like Nami and Yusup. Some of the character death scenes should actually be deaths, like Kinemon, to raise the stakes. The episode could end setting up Luffy vs. Kato and Kid and Law vs. Big Mom. Episode 12 would cover chapters 1016 to 1059, including Kid and Law defeating Big Mom, Gear 5 and Luffy defeating Kato, as well as the aftermath of the conflict. Luffy, Kid and Law's new bounty, as well as Ryokuyu's arrival and his battle against Yamato e Momonosuke, with Shanks' arrival intercepting the battle. The season could end setting up the Cross Guild, and Amazon Lily being attacked by the Marines and the Blackbeard Pirates who kidnap Kobe. We don't have enough published chapters to map out seasons after the sixth one, but assuming Egghead Island is one of the shorter setup arcs, we could probably guess a two episodes arc for that on season seven followed by potentially four to five episodes for Elbaf. We know that we are already in the final saga. 
but Oda already hinted that this could be the longest one yet, so I wouldn't be surprised if we also needed season 8 to conclude this story. I know we've got some news about the possibility of extending the show to 12 seasons, but this number seems way too unrealistic. Considering it takes some time, around one year and a half for a season to be released minimum, especially considering the visual and special effects will tend to become more and more challenging as the series goes on, that would mean a total of almost 20 years to finish this show. This is completely insane. That's why I think this proposition of 7 or 8 seasons here in the video is more realistic. So that's it. That's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Would you structure the seasons in a different way? What I can say is I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to summarize the plot lines going forward. I know everything goes through Oda, so whatever details they decide to keep probably mean it is important for the end game. so that could possibly give us clues on how the series is going to end. Don't forget to support this live action and like and subscribe to this channel. It is a baby channel where I'm planning to talk about anime, movies, fantasy books, and related topics, and your support would definitely help. See you next time.